Church of Christ here in Orlando, Florida. I'm Wesley T. Leonard, Senior Minister of this great congregation of God's people. Thankful I am to serve with great visionary elders, industrious deacons, and this plethora of people who decided to take Central Florida for King Jesus. Let's open as what we always do, Southside. One, two, three. When you talk with God, no breath is lost. When you walk with God, no strength is lost. When you wait for God, no time is lost. And when you trust in God, your soul will never, ever be lost. Friendly reminder to all of you who are listening and watching, every Sunday morning at 11 a.m. and every Wednesday night, 7 p.m., we you can access us, worship with us, study with us, uh, pray with us, uh, talk and walk with us on Southside Facebook, 
Southside YouTube channel, Southside website, sscoc.org, and the Southside app. Friendly reminder to all of our members, next Sunday, the fourth Sunday, March 28th, is our virtual fellowship, our koinea. It's that time when we can get together on a Zoom meeting, see each other, talk, reminisce, uh, pray, laugh, and share concentric concerns. That's next Sunday, 12.30 p.m. After morning worship, we'll have our monthly virtual fellowship Zoom meeting. Happy birthday from the middle to the end of March, we are now. Uh, to Reginald Philip Moses, Deacon Moses, can you believe it turned 50 years old? Nairi James also had a birthday from the middle to the end of March. Brenda Hall, Kimberly Adams, happy birthday, Sister Kim. Uh, Janae Harris, oh, what a favorite she is. Eric Parker, happy birthday, young man. Uh, Shamori James, well, Shamori Hadley, I apologize to my great. Uh, cousin Keith, uh, Shamoria Hadley, happy birthday. Uh, Winston Bre uh, Brewster has a, a birthday in March as well. Rowena Rose, happy birthday. Nigel Brown, what a fine young man. Dwayne uh, Barton had a birthday. Catherine Bailey, uh, Renita Gabriel, Jasmine Walker, and Curtis Anderson all have birthdays from the middle to the end of March. Happy birthday, Deacon Curtis Anderson. Ron and Lily Bratcher, happy anniversary this month. Tracy and Janelle McDuffie. Daniel and Jenny Bell Lazara. John and Felicia Davis. Reggie and Ursula Moses. And Mario and Michelle Tonzo. Happy anniversary to all of you. Beloved, let's move expeditiously to the task at hand. If you would be so beneficently kind, meet me or beat me to the New Testament book of 2 Timothy chapter 2. And our rendezvous is verse 19. 2 Timothy chapter 2. And we just need one verse. Verse 19. 2 Timothy 2.19, the Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his. So let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The Bible says emphatically and clearly, without hesitation and reservation, the foundation of God Standeth sure. That is our predicate today. I want to preach. Are you sure that you are sure? Are you sure that you are sure? Beloved, Paul, the great apostolos of old, penned these significant words. Paul penned this letter, this, this parchment, this epistolary, from Nero's dark and dirty dungeon in Rome. He writes to his protege, his mentee, his, his son in the gospel, Timotheus, AKA Timothy. This book of Second Timothy <coughs> is really just a sequel of First Timothy. Paul addresses his young Padawan, Timothy, and he reminds him and I want to inform you that God is faithful. Paul reminded him in 2 Timothy 2.15, all you got to do, young man, is study. Show yourself approved unto God, a workman who needeth not be ashamed, that rightly devised the word of truth. And that segue and catapults us into the verse of inference today, 2 Timothy 2.19, beloved. Paul says emphatically, nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. I want to ask you again, are you sure that you are sure? You see, beloved, I want to use as a subsidiary text, 2 Peter chapter 1, verse number 10. Peter says and instructs us, 
make our peace calling and election sure. I want to ask you again, Southside and beyond, are you sure that you are sure? Psalms 11 and 3, the Bible also uh, tag teams this text when the psalmist says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? So now we have three uh, verses that help form the foundational stones for this Simonic castle. Paul asks in 2 Timothy and states the foundation of God standeth sure. 2 Peter 1 and 10, Peter says, make your calling and election sure. And then the psalmist is saying in Psalms 11 and 3, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? Oh, beloved, we live in a day where we ought to be trying to preserve the foundations. Yes, the foundation of God standing sure. But some of these foundations we're building today are not worth building at all. You and I have lived long enough to see the very foundations that we grew up under crumbling. All of the foundational things of our lives are under assault, under constant attack. We grew up in a world when people were shaking, but all of our foundations were sure. But in these days of satanic sophomore attack from the devil himself, the very foundations of our lives, our society, and this world, our homes, the church, and our faith, our politics, people around us, we can see the very foundations that we grew up with are being attacked. And they are being destroyed. You know, you ought to have enough sense not to destroy the foundation. For if the foundation be destroyed, the house cannot stand. Folks, you don't knock down the pillars uh, in the house that you reside in. Folks, you don't bomb the bottom out the ship that you're sailing on. Folks, you don't destroy the cockpit of the plane that you're flying on. The Psalms 11 and 3 says, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? Well, we can take that word now. It's not longer if the foundation's being destroyed. Now we can say when the foundation are being destroyed. We have lived long enough that the very foundation that God established through his son Jesus are under constant attack. Beloved, I don't want to do injury to this text, but we need to preserve those sure foundations. We need to hang our lives on a sure deal. A foundation is something which can stand. Foundation is what you build upon. Foundation is your base, it's your bottom, it's your bedrock. Foundation is the basics of life. Foundation is where you can build your infrastructure. Just Jesus said in Matthew chapter 7, verse 24 through 26, that a man ought never build his house on the sand. Rather, he ought to build his house on a rock. I say as the hymnologist, on Christ the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. Yes, there's an organized effort to destroy the very foundations of our lives and of our faith. Only solid foundations are credible enough to build upon. Yes, we live in an age where you can see the walls tumbling and falling. We can see the roof is caving in. But yes, beloved, the Bible says that the foundation of God standeth sure. So I want to ask you again today, as Peter said, make your peace calling and election sure. Oh, church, the question today is, are you sure that you are sure? Yeah, our foundations, the people we are around, the church we attend, the nation we live in, we ought to have decent, respectable people who use the Bible as our guide. It does not mean that everything is all right and perfect, but we ought to be able to stand on something sturdy even when we ourselves are shaking. I said to you a hundred thousand times, 
I'm for right. I am for right even when I'm doing wrong. I came by to tell you we ought never tamper with the sure foundations that have been outlined by the Bible. I see people going from man to man, women going from man to man, men going from women to women. And the problem they have, beloved, is, girl, let me tell you something. You can find a new relationship, but it don't help if you're still on that same old shaky foundation. What you need and what I need, what all of us need, is a sure foundation. Oh, yeah, the foundation of things that, that are established by the Bible <clears throat> and by the norms of biology and anatomy. Oh yeah, beloved, I know when God created us, God made a man and he was a male. God made a woman and she was a female. And that's all he made. But the foundations are being destroyed. Yeah, girl, yeah, that's why we call you a female because you came out of the male. And the word female, F-E, stands for fetus. That just means, girl, you are the male, because you came out of the man, you are the male who carries the fetus. That's why we call you a female. And then we call you a woman, because you came out of the man, and that word W-O in front of man, woman, stands for womb. That means you are the man who has a womb that carried the baby. I don't care how you feel. I don't care what society says. You can't wake up and tell God, I don't like the way you made me. And I, I'm going to shake my finger in your face, God, and nothing you can do about it. We need to get back to the foundations that stand in sure. Yeah, the foundation that stands in sure is a man ought to marry a man. Uh, not a man ought never marry a man, and a woman ought never marry a woman. Foundation standeth sure. Children don't talk like the parents. That's a bad foundation. Foundation standeth sure. You ought to get married one time for life. Now divorce is almost 70%. Foundations ought to be sure. Foundation standeth sure. If man, if you make a baby, you ought to provide and take care of the baby. You can't make baby after baby and then won't work in a pie factory tasting pies. Foundation, that's a shaky foundation. Foundations ought to be sure. We ought to be able to go to the police and be protected. The foundations ought to be sure. I remember when you could go to the movie theater, theater and be safe. I remember you could go to the mall and be safe. I remember you could go to Walmart and be safe. I remember you could get on an airplane at the airport and be safe. I remember you could send your children to school and you didn't have to worry about them coming home safe. I remember you could sit up in your house and watch television on a Saturday night. Wasn't nobody going to break in there on you. You were safe. I remember you could come to the church house and didn't need security cameras and security guards. You were safe. But I came by to tell you, all these foundations now are shaking and being destroyed. But we need to stand on a sure foundation. Are you sure that you are sure? I'm so sick and tired of people talking about these bad children and talking about young people and how bad they are. Remind me of a story of a man who came home and his 16-year-old son wasn't expecting him to come home. And he came home and his son was sitting on the front porch smoking a cigarette and drinking a beer. He had found one of his father's cigarettes and he went into the refrigerator and got one of his father's beers that was sitting on the front porch. Daddy drove up unexpectedly and started yelling and fussing and cussing at the boy. But the boy's grandmother, who was the man's mother, was in the house. He came in fussing and cussing and he raised his hand to hit his son. You don't smoke and drink in my house. He's going to hit the boy. And the man who had his hand up, his mother and the boy's grandmother said, don't you touch him. I dare you to hit him. He says, she said, let me tell you something. She said, mice, I told you all this, mice don't cut holes in walls. Mice don't cut holes in walls. Mice just crawl through the holes already cut by rats. I wish y'all, I wish y'all could get what I'm saying to you. Children behave in what they see. 
Mice don't cut those paths in life. They just follow us big rats. So when you start talking about how bad children are, it's really an indictment on all of us that we ought to do better. We need to get back to the foundation of stones that the Bible sets down. The home ought to be a haven that you can raise children, but the foundations are being destroyed. We live shorter and enjoy less. We have no integrity anymore in our government. The Democrats and the Republicans are corrupt. Their quest for power and money is trumps their quest for right and wrong. Even the church foundations are being destroyed. Yes, we have to preach Christ and him crucified. But people secularly have infiltrated the church and they have an agenda that would change and destroy the very foundations. See, bylaws ought never come before Bible. Yeah, preach, Brother Leonard. Yeah, we live in a day. The preacher's name is not John, but Johnny May. His name is not Paul, but Paulette and Pauline. We live in a day where it's no longer Peter, but Patricia preaching to us. We need to preserve the foundations. Psalms 11 and 3 says, if the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? I'm so glad he asked that question. I want to be sure that I'm sure. I want you to be sure that you are sure that we all are standing on the foundation that is sure. You know why the world is going to hell in a handbasket? Who was it? Martin Luther King, I believe one says, evil prevails when good men do nothing. The church is set by idly and watch the erosion and proliferation of our society our homes and even our church. The first thing the righteous can do to make sure that we're sure, we need to educate. Oh yeah, we need to educate. We got, if you have ignorance in the poor pit, you're going to have ignorance in the pews. I remember a story of a preacher who went, was in preaching a revival and he was preaching a revival and he caught a cold or caught a little bug he went to the walk-in center. And when he went to the walk-in center, brothers, he went to the walk-in center. And when he went to the walk-in center, he, he asked the doctor, he said, I'm preaching a revival. And I need a shot for this little bug I got. He said, can you give me a quick shot or something? Uh, people are being saved and being baptized. And, and I don't need to, uh, to be sick. The doctor said, okay, let me give you a quick shot. He said, roll up your sleeve. And the priest said, roll up my sleeve. He said, I'm going to give you a shot in the arm. He said, no, doc, don't shoot me in the arm. He said, when I preach, I point the sinners and I wave my Bible and I wave my hand. He said, I don't need no lame arm. Doctor said, okay, well, pull down your pants. Pull down your trousers. He said, what you want to do that for? He said, well, I'm going to give you a shot in your hip. He said, oh, no, doc, don't give me no shot in my hip. He says, I'm not one of those stationary preachers. I walk when I preach. I stomp when I preach. I'm animated. I'm demonstrative. I don't need no lame leg. Now the doctor's frustrated. He said, well, preacher, is there any part of you that you don't use when you're preaching? He thought about it and he said, well, give me a shot right back here. Uh, uh, he didn't use his head when he was preaching. Y'all don't know. I wish I had a church in here. Folks, we ought never preach and teach without educating ourselves on the word of God. I say again, the Bible says in 2 Timothy 2.15, study to show ourselves approved under God. Study. Not just read your Bible. Study to show yourself approved under God. A workman who needed not be ashamed, rightly dividing. The word of truth. Another preacher said on one occasion, uh, his daughter had gone off to college and she came back and her brother and his brother was leading song service and the brother had a new song he brought back from college. Brother was singing, uh, there's a bomb in Gilead to heal the sin sick soul. The congregation loved that new song he was singing. There's a bomb in Gilead. Daddy got up uneducated he said, children, I didn't know it was that bad. He said, if they bomb in Gilead, they're coming to Orlando next. 
You see, when you, I wish I had a church in here, but it's a good preacher that just going on deaf ears. Beloved, we have to be educated for us to be sure that we're sure. Nobody can't run no game on you when you know what you know, when you study what you ought to study, when you're sure that you're sure. Sure means you're free from doubt. Sure means something is reliable. Sure means that you're confident. Sure means you're already convinced. You're fully persuaded. It's beyond question. It's stable. It's firm. When you are sure, it is incontrovertible. Uh, in, uh, in, uh, it is something that's unwavering. You see, beloved, we ought to be sure that we're sure. When it comes to church, when it comes to morals, when it comes to foundation, we ought not be pretty sure. We ought not be mostly sure. We ought not hope we're sure. We ought not believe we're sure. We ought not think we're sure. We ought not be casual on the fringe or the periphery. We need to make sure that we're sure that we're on a solid foundation. There was a time when we could be sure that the kids came home safe from school. There was a time you could sit in the church house and be sure nothing would happen. There's a time you could sit in your own house and not worry about Pookie and Ray Ray breaking in on you. There was a time your children could leave and play outside all day long. And you say, just come home before the porch light comes on or the street light comes on. And you didn't have to worry about anybody grabbing or snatching your kids. But folks, we don't live in a day where our foundations are sure anymore. And what can the righteous do? The first thing we need to do is study and educate ourselves on this book called the Bible. And then secondly, you know what we can do to make sure we're sure? We ought to equip ourselves. You need to prepare ourselves. But beloved, Paul said in Ephesians 6, 11, put on the whole armor of God that we can withstand the wiles of the devil. You, you can educate, but now you need to prepare for battle. Uh, you need to put on the whole armor of God. We need to quit just singing, I'm a hard fighting soldier, and put on the whole armor of God. Some folks singing, I'm a hard fighting soldier, and all they do is fight other soldiers. I came by to tell you, put on the whole armor of God, helmet of salvation, we put on the breastplate of righteousness, gird ourselves with truth, shod our feet with the preparation of the gospel. We need to have in our right hand the sword of the spirit and in our left hand the shield of faith. Put on the whole armor of God. Prepare ourselves. You, you, you know, too many people go and leave their house every day with no armor on that's like going out in January in Chicago with no coat on. It's like trying to play a football game with no helmet on. You, you, you have to be prepared. It's like trying to drive a car with no gas. I came by to tell you today, beloved, you need and I need to put on not part armor, not most armor. Put on, Paul said, the whole armor of God. First of all, to be sure that we're sure, what can the righteous do? Educate ourselves. Study to show ourselves approved. Uh, and then, secondly, put on the whole armor of God. Prepare ourselves for battle. You know, you know. And then, thirdly, we need to engage. We need to educate. We need to equip. And we need to engage. Too many people got on the whole armor. You've educated. You got on the whole armor, but you're sitting on the couch with a full uniform. I buried people. Uh, an, uh, an allegory, an analogy, who got on the whole armor. You don't need it then. Uh, you, you don't need a whole armor to sit in your living room and watch your flat screen. Once you equip yourself, you need to go to battle. It's time to go report to duty. No leaves, no furloughs. I came by to tell you, it's not time to put on your uniform and go to bed. You even go to put on uniform to go to church and go to work. No, you put on your uniform to go to battle. This is not a nursing home. 
this is a battlefield and evil prevails because good folk won't fight evil. Bible says in 1 Timothy chapter 6 verse 12 that we ought to fight the good fight of faith. Yes, we first educate ourselves. That's what righteous folk can do. And when I say education, I'm talking about biblical. I'm talking about spiritual. I'm, I'm talking about godly. I'm talking about uh, the logos of God. It's all right to good secular education. We all need it. We all desire it. But I'm talking about don't be secular educated and biblically ignorant. We need to educate ourselves. And then we need to equip ourselves. And now we need to engage in the battle. I went to get my first coronavirus shot up here at Valencia, not too far from here. I stood in line, this is the first day it was given uh, uh, regular folk, not old folk, but regular folk shots. It's almost three weeks ago. And I got there, had to stand in line about three hours. Now, a couple of days later, uh, the lines had subsided, but I didn't have enough sense to wait on that. I went and got my shot. It struck me as I stood in line, there were soldiers there. And they were uniformed men. They had on the guard. That you can tell they were the United States Army, United States military, different ranks. And so since I stood in line so long, I started engaging some of the soldiers. And I said, are, are y'all reservists? Uh, you know, are you local? You from Florida? Where you from? And the guy said, no, we're not reservists. We're enlisted men and women. He said, we're from Fort Campbell, Kentucky. He said, the military flew us from Kentucky down here to Florida. To give you all shots. And I'm talking to the guy. I said, I said, first of all, the military didn't fly here. We flew here, the taxpayer. I said, you mean to tell me, all these soldiers in Florida, they flew y'all from, he said, yes, sir. Thousand of us flew from Kentucky. We sleeping here in the hotel, eating here on the government dining. And I said to myself, see, they got on uniforms. They got on guard. They ought to be out there fighting. No, they ain't giving me and you shots. Don't get me wrong. I'm glad to give a shot. You better get your shot. But that's for medical people. The problem is we misallocate what a soldier's job is. He agreed with me, the young man. He says, yeah, we ought to be out fighting to keep the nation safe. They were making sure we got corona shots. Again, I'm not arguing against them. They had on uniforms, but they wasn't fighting. They were doing medical duty. And they were soldiers. I'm trying to tell you, when we put on this whole armor of God, we need to be fighting against the wiles of the devil. And too often we got on the uniform, but we hadn't reported to duty. And when we fight, we're fighting everything and anybody except who we ought to fight, which is Satan himself. The night is too long and tomorrow is too late for us to be sure that we are sure. We need to put on the whole armor of God. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to be sure that we're sure. The text says, Paul says to Timothy, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal, the Lord knoweth them who are his. Let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Second Peter chapter one, verse 10. Peter said, make your calling an election, sure. And the psalmist says in Psalms 11 and 3, if the foundations be destroyed. Now Paul already said that the foundation of God standeth sure, but it is under constant perpetual satanic attack. The psalmist says, if the foundation of God be, if the foundations be destroyed, what shall the righteous do? My sermon today is answer that question. If we're going to be sure that we're sure, the righteous ought to educate. The righteous ought to equip ourselves. And the righteous ought to engage in battle. Jesus said in Matthew 16 and 18, in that Magna Carta verse, the constitution of the church, he says, Thou art Peter, and upon this rock, he wasn't talking about Peter, he's talking about the gospel. On this rock, I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. He's saying, I built my church on a rock, 
which is a sure foundation. Are you sure that you're sure? Are you sure that you're going to heaven when you die? Are you sure that eternity will be spent on the celestial shores of glory? Are you sure that you're striving to live right down here on earth? Not perfect, but striving to live right. Are you sure that you're trying and with all your might to be a good husband and trying with all your might to be a good wife, a good son, a good daughter, a good Christian, a, a good ministry leader, a good elder, a good preacher, a, a, a good sister in this. Are you sure that you're a good worker? You're a good neighbor, a dependable family member. Are you sure that you're sure? You, there's some things you don't need to ponder and wonder about. There's some things you don't need to be in ambiguity about. The foundations of God standeth sure. Make your election and calling sure. Are you sure that you are sure? Let me invite you to Christ. It's the only way you can be sure. There's nothing else I really can be sure about. I used to see a boy and know he's a boy. I ain't sure no more. I see a girl and thought she was a girl. I ain't sure no more. You, you, you can't be sure about a whole lot of stuff. That dollar you got in your pocket, I, I used to know it was a dollar. I ain't sure no more. Might be counterfeit. There's a whole lot of things in life I'm not sure about. But I want to be sure about salvation. Are you sure that you're sure? Let me give you some assurity. If you want to be saved, hear the gospel, the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus to Christ. If you want to be sure, believe that with all of your heart. If you want to be sure, repent, turn from your ways of sin, degradation, and iniquity. If you want to be sure, beloved, I need you, and the Bible commands you to confess that Jesus is to Christ, the Son of God. You want to be sure, double dog sure, you got to be baptized, immersed, submerged in water for the remission, removal, and the eradication of your sin. And then you and I can be sure he'll add you to the church and walk with a penitent heart and you can be sure that heaven will be your home. Come now, call now, act now to be sure that you're sure. Let us pray. Father God, we're mindful, thankful for your word. It's power to save. Father, with the foundations being destroyed, everything we've known as nomenclatures under satanic attack, but your word gives us comfort that the foundations of God, not the foundations of man, not the foundations of politics, not even the foundations of our monetary systems are sure, but the foundations of God standing sure having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Lord, help us through your word to be educated, equipped, and engaged in the battle. Help us to be sure that we're sure. Now, God, we pray for the least, the lost, the sick, the shut in, the doomed, the damned, the destitute, the bereaved, whoever and wherever they may be. Bless us with the capacity and the ability to minister to one another's needs. Forgive us of our sins. Hide us behind your cross. Cover us with your blood. This is our prayer. This is our hope in Jesus' name. Now as we prepare to partake of your son's body and your son's blood, and as we prepare to give you the first fruit of our offering, give you our labor, our tithes and our offerings, we pray we'll do it in a manner that's acceptable to you. In Jesus Christ, your son's name we pray. Amen. Beloved, we pray, hope, and trust you have secured a piece of unleavened bread. The unleavened bread represents Christ's body. He commanded us to do this in remembrance of me. He said in the upper room at the last Passover, according to Mark, um, Matthew's gospel, in the upper room, the last Passover, uh, assembled a table of his 12 disciples. He said this unleavened bread represents his body, and the fruit of the vine, the cup, represents his blood. As often as you do this, you show forth his death till he comes. How often did they do it? Upon the first day of every week. Let us now partake of the unleavened bread. Let us now partake of the fruit of the vine. Thank God for Jesus. I want to remind you, if you've run out of communion supplies, there's an abundance we have here at the church in perpetuity. 
You can stop by Monday through Friday from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Saturday mornings, early Saturday mornings, and Sunday mornings about 9 to 10, 15. You can pick up as many communion cups as you need. If you want to drop off your lay-by, your money, your offering, we're here to receive it, register it, and deposit it in your name. It's time to give now. It's time to be sure. It's time to stand on a sure foundation. It's time for you to be good to God and me to be good to God because God showed sure up. Talking about being sure. See, we're going to go from sure to show. Sure. Grandma says there's a difference between being sure and being sure. I'm sure enough sure that if you do right by God, God will do right by you. It's time to make your calling and election sure. Beloved, if you want to give and you not inclined to give online, you don't trust it or you're not local, you want to mail it in. Our P.O. box is at the bottom of the screen to my left and your right. You can mail in your lay by. Please don't mail cash, but do mail in certified funds or a check. If you just want to drop off your lay by when you pick up communion, you can do that. If we're not here, there's abundance of communion cups in the mailbox outside the front door. Please don't leave your money or your lay by in the mailbox. Please slide it under the door. Slide it all the way under, and we'll still get it and register it in your name. Preponderously speaking, most of our members give online. You can see at the top of the screen our three predominant ways of giving online. Give or five. Save, swift, and secure. PayPal, save, swift, and secure. And then our second most popular is uh, Cash App. You can give it safe, swift, and secure. Keep your obligation to God. If you want to be blessed by God, be a blessing to God. Always remember and never forget the foundation of God standeth sure. And the only question remains for you and I is, are we sure that we're sure? If we want to be sure, we need to educate we need to engage, and we need to equip. God bless you. God keep you. This is our prayer. Are you sure that you're sure? Have a great day. I'm so glad. I'm so glad.
Jesus.